What's good, math family? In today's video, we're looking at challenging SAT problems, and I got four examples that we're going to review. Let's get started for today. In our first problem, they're asking us for the circumference, right? We have a square inside a circle, and all they given us was the area for the square, which is 50. Now understand, for us to get the circumference of a circle, we have to either know the radius or the diameter. And that is what we're trying to find in this problem. So the first thing we need to, to understand or know is the formula for area for a square, which is area is equal to S squared. So we know 50 is equal to S squared. We rearrange the formula or simplify it. So we know that S is equal to the square root of 50, right? So that's the first piece of important information we need. Where does this go? So here it goes, here it goes right here. Here it goes right here. Now, why is this important? Because we're gonna create a triangle, right? And when we look right here, this diagonal, right, of the square also represents the diameter of the circle. And we could find this two ways. We could use the Pythagorean theorem, right? 50, uh, radical 50 squared plus radical 50 squared is equal to Let's put C squared. C squared. So we're going to get radical 100 is equal to C squared. And we know that 10 is equal to C. Right? So we could get that this is 10. Or if we understood those special triangle relationships. So when we, when we cut a square in half, right? Like how we did. We should know that each side is represented by S. And then the diagonal is just S times radical two. So if we follow that formula, guess what? Radical 50 multiplied by radical two, radical 100, which simplifies to 10. We would get the same exact thing. Now that we got that piece of information, this is what we need to do next. But let's just erase and get some space first. All right, all right. So now that we got that, right, there's two things we need to know. We know area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, and we know circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Why is this important? Because this is where a lot of students make a mistake, right? Remember that the circumference is 10. That is not the radius. So if we're looking for the circumference, that's going to be equal to 2 times pi times five, which will simplify to 10 pi. So the circumference in this answer, make sure, yep, would be B, 10 pi. But students sometimes are moving too fast and what they end up doing is they, they, they mix these two formulas or they plug it into the wrong one and they'll do something like this. C is equal to pi r squared, and then the next thing you know, they have, they get 25 pi as an answer. But please, guys, make sure that you're, 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 you're careful and understand what they're asking, right? If they were asking us for the area, right, the area would be pi times 5 squared, which, like I said, would be 25 pi. Pi. So just make sure that you don't confuse area and circumference or those formulas when you're solving on the SAT. Let's move to problem number two. In problem number two now, a little bit different. They're asking us to find the area of the shaded region. And the region that they're talking about is this little space in between that triangle and the end of the circle. Just, you know, another word for segment. So how do we find that? So the first thing we need to do is find basically the area of the sector. So we're looking for this whole entire piece. So the triangle and that red piece. And we're going to use this formula. So theta is just the, the angle measure. So now we have 60 over 360 multiplied by pi times r squared, which is just 12 squared. So now we're going to get and actually, let's, 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 let's simplify, right? We have 60 over 360 multiplied by 144 pi. 
So when we simplify this, right, let's, let's get the calculator. This is going to simplify to 24 pi, right? So now we know the area of the sector is 24 pi. So let's just write that, right? And after we do this, the second thing that we need to do is to now focus on finding out what is the area of the actual triangle so that we could subtract and find a difference? And there's something special that kind of happens here. So if you've noticed, this is going to be an equilateral triangle, meaning that all the sides are going to be 12 and all the interior angles are 60. So if we want to find the area that half the base times height is not going to work with this, um, this type of triangle, what we have to do is use the area of a triangle for equilateral triangle. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't remember it off my head. I'm going to make sure I write it down correctly. It's going to be S to the second power times radical three all over four. So now that we understand that, let's, let's start plugging this in. So area is equal to the side. We know that's 12 squared times radical three all over four. So now I'm going to start simplifying. I have 144 radical 3 over 4. I'm going to make sure I divide. Let's see what we get. All right. So we're going to get area is equal to 36 times radical 3. Now, understand, we're not combining these answers. What's going to happen is we take the area of the sector, right? And we're going to subtract the area of the triangle. And this is going to be our answer and the way that we find the, the area for that shaded region. And you guys should know that it's going to be answer D. So just please make sure you guys review area of a sector and, and your triangle rules because they're definitely going to throw this type of problem up there. And now let's go to the next problem. Problem number three now, we're dealing with parallelograms. You know they're going to throw this on there. So they're asking us what is the value of y minus z, right? So the first thing we want to understand is that opposite angles are congruent, right? So y and 3x minus 5 are going to be the same, and 2x minus 5 and z are going to have the same angle measure, right? And we know consecutive angles are going to, are going to add up to 180. What is Mr. Peter saying? If we use these two angles and create an equation, we could figure out what y and z is. So this is what we need to do. We have 2x minus 15 plus 3x minus 5 is equal to 180, right? We know consecutive angles measure to 180. So we simplify, we get 5x minus 20 is equal to 180. Simplify more, 5x is equal to 200. Now we simplify x is equal to, I want to say 40. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry, guys. I got lazy. All right. X is equal to 40. So just remember that is not the final angle measure. That's just what x equals. So now we have to plug it back in. Please don't forget this because when it's a multiple choice, they're going to have this answer there to trick you. I'm telling you. So now we just go back and it's simple. We're just plugging in and simplifying. So let's do the first one. So we got 2 times 40 minus 15. So that gives me 80 minus 15, 65. So we know this angle is 65. This angle is 65 degrees. Now from here, guys, we could just do 180 minus 65 to get Y and the other angle. But just for the video purpose, we're just going to plug it in. Right, so now we have three times 40 minus five. So this is 120 minus five. We get a final answer of 115, yup. And you know, once we add those back, we'll get 180. So now that we have the angle measures, right? All we gotta do is subtract. So I got 115 minus 65, that's zero. So I know the difference between those two angle measures is going to be 50 degrees. 
So just make sure that you remember parallelograms and you look at it because you're going to see common problems. And before we go, I got one more problem that you need to see and just smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video so far or if it's been helpful. Let's go. Last problem of this video, math family. They said the area of a parallelogram ABCD is 40. And they're asking us, what is the area of the rectangle, right? And this is all the information that they gave us. So we know the area of a parallelogram is equal to what? Base times the height. So if we know 40 is equal to the area and the base is 10, that means the height has to be 4, right? So 4 is equal to H. That's the first thing we need to know and understand. So we're talking about right here, this is 4. Now that we understand that, this makes it easier for us to what? Find the base of this triangle right here, right? Because we know the whole distance is 10, but we don't know the distance right here. And we need to find that so we could find the area of what? The rectangle. So what we could do is do the Pythagorean theorem, right? C squared is equal to A squared plus, plus B squared, right? 25 is equal to 16 plus B squared. Once we subtract, we're going to get 9 is equal to B squared. We take the square root of both sides. We know that 3 is equal to B, right? So now we know that this is equal to 3. Or if you just kind of remember those special relationships with triangles, you should know a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So you could just plug that in without doing the Pythagorean theorem. But we had to do that. So now that we've done that, right? Now that we've done that, we know that the height for the rectangle is 4. And when we subtract 10 and 3, we know the base from here to here is going to be 7. So now when I do the area, and this is equal to length times width, the area is going to be equal to 7 times 4. So I know area is equal to 28. So this is how we would find this answer. We really hope that this SAT review on challenging problems was helpful for you all. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Algebra with Mr. Peters. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you had a question on today's video, thank you for joining.